one for right a while for I would say for the next few months because we're talking about immune health and trying to really look at ways that we can uh, do what we can to be proactive. This is a topic for everyone. So uh, I'm Amanda Villarreal and I have really, you know, been passionate about sharing information that as a personal trainer, nutritionist, and uh, someone that really is an advocate for helping people, this this is something back to school that we can really start to look at ideas that we can begin to implement right away. So, and as a reminder, guys, this is for even adults. So I don't want some of you guys on here. I know a couple of you are like, hey, I don't have kids in school. This information is for everyone. So I promise you will all get some takeaways from it. So, all right. If you guys, I talk fast and I got a lot to cover tonight. So I'm going to really push to keep moving through this. So feel free to at any time, you know, take a screenshot. Your phone is great. Take a picture of it. You don't have time to write it down. If there's something you think about as a question, I keep saying use the chat box, okay? So find that chat box and share any questions you might have in there and we'll make sure we address those uh, throughout this. So, all right, guys. So let's just start in getting into this right away of, you know, looking at what are some of the things that really are continuing to work negatively against our immune system. We look at stress, we look at poor nutrition, and sleep are just some of the key things. And every single one of these, we do have some control over, and that's what we need to realize, what are some of the techniques and things we can do to help ourselves. And if you look at your immune system, I think that really it's, I actually think it's probably the most complex system in our entire body, and it's very fascinating the more you learn about it. And that's why when you look at from adults to kids, that it's complex to say that there is one thing that you can do to you know, change your immune health completely. It's a combination of things. And because we're all different, we have to figure out the best avenue for helping ourselves to be able to take strategies. And this is, again, for all ages. And you think kids aren't stressed? 100% they are. And we're going back into situations that none of us have ever had to deal with, from wearing masks to having a social distance to being on the playground with kids and you know not being able to communicate the same because of masks. You know, we're going to have stress in different ways and they might not be able to tell us so i think that we really got to be even more observant and just more patient even at work you know we don't know what people are going through right somebody shows up and they're really upset and angry we don't know maybe you know someone close to them is very sick or we don't know the circumstances so it's just a reminder let's be extra patient and extra forgiving to people right now so Looking at exposure to toxins, this is something else we're gonna address a little bit tonight. Poor diet, lack of rest, aging, and sugar and alcohol are just a few that we want to be really concentrating on here moving forward. I bring this up a lot because I think that this is a really important highlight of what we can do, two things, and there are several books that are actually written on this topic, that when we look at the main characteristics of what diseases stem from, it's these two things. And we have control over both of those for the most part. So think about that, guys. The exposure to toxins and the lack of nutrients are the two causes of cells and what causes them to malfunction, and that is what weakens our immune system. So we just kind of mentioned here really quickly, this is not rocket science. This is stuff you all know, but these are some things that we can do all ages to help with improving, you know, looking at some basic strategies here. And I think that if you start to really pay attention to your body, pay attention to your kids, that you can probably choose which one of those maybe you need to start focusing on first. And that's our goal is to get you thinking about what are small steps. It might not be across the board. You can implement all five right now. But I guarantee, for example, if your kids are sitting and they're going to be doing virtual schooling for the next however many months, they probably need to have some exercise going on. So you need to be figuring out some strategies to get them moving for at least an hour a day. So again, start thinking about what are these areas that you could concentrate on. And as we're getting back into both the workforce, but also into schools, the more that we come together, it's great for building up immunity, right? We need to be exposed to those germs, but there's also so much more going on that we have to then be ready to take note of. And that's why we feel like right now, guys, it's the middle of August, that we need to be on top of this now. Don't wait until you start school on September 1st to say, I should be taking my vitamins. You know, I really want to instill that. You should be starting taking strategies right now and not waiting. Here's a great little guide just to show you some rough ideas of how much you should be sleeping per night. So take a look at your age, take a look at your kids' ages, 
and get an idea, are they anywhere close to this? Are you close to this? And maybe this is an area you need to start focusing on. And I know stress is a big part of why people don't sleep enough. Uh, it can also just be poor habits, right? But really try to think about, is there something you can do? Because sleep is related to everything from links to diabetes, to causing excess weight gain, to uh, many disease risk factors we see from not sleeping. So take a look at that chart. And again, just kind of get an idea of, is this something we need to start working on? So kids going back to school, I know, for example, our kids, we start, you know, the beginning of September, we need to start now getting to bed a little earlier, you know, and that's just some of those things we got to start thinking about now and not waiting until the day before, because that's going to lead to once they're back and their bodies aren't ready, that's another way that they're going to weaken their immune system is they're not getting enough sleep. So just really be thinking about that. Our diet, this is by far one of the things, again, we can best control. What are we eating? And this is you know, tied in in so many different areas of our immunity, but getting different colors of fruits and vegetables, really trying to get back to more basics. You know, we do this with everything we try to teach is getting back to more whole food focus. So trying to eat more whole grains, more beans, you know, incorporating those healthy fats. These are just simple things. And as you're starting to get into maybe packing lunches again, what are some of the things that we can start to be putting in our lunch boxes? Instead of maybe we are grabbing canned peaches, for example, and grabbing those little plastic containers because they're convenient. Maybe we actually give them a real peach. So we can be thinking about very simple tactics here of how incorporating more whole foods. And again, some of this is preparation, right? We have to learn these things. This is not for all of us easy, but that's why we come together to help each other. So again, I want you guys to be commenting in the chat box. Maybe you have some tip that you have you're getting ready for back to school. Even a favorite lunch box. I know um, Planet lunch boxes are a popular one for kids I keep hearing about, but maybe you have a favorite one. Throw it in the chat there. We'd love to know maybe what you found that would be helpful for us. So, so guys, we talked about ways that our you know, immune systems are broken down, and I think that we all know, you know kids especially are putting their fingers more everywhere. I was just actually talking to a nurse earlier, and she was saying that they're finding now one of the ways that we are getting viruses even even more common now is through your eyes. <laughs> so we're probably gonna start seeing people in goggles and more of the shields and it's just crazy, you know? We have to just be thinking about this now. Yes, we can wash our hands, but even just, you know, being on more of the, all right, I gotta quit putting my fingers by my eyes or, you know, reaching for just habits of, you know, things that we might not realize we're doing, but thinking about that. And your phones are another huge ground for bacteria. So clean your phones, guys. That's just a tip to do every single day. We should be cleaning our phones. So wash our hands. We need to think about what are the things that we use every day that we, we don't want to share with others, even simple things right now. This is a, a great one, guys, that some people think we're crazy, but I always make people take their shoes off. For workouts, people come down the stairs, they have to have separate shoes. You know, we carry in a ton of bacteria on the bottoms of our shoes, and you don't think that that gets throughout your house, but it does. So take your shoes off right away. Kids too, take your shoes off. If you're really worried, for example, you go to uh, your children's classroom because maybe somebody was just, you know, diagnosed with the flu or COVID. We don't know what right away. Probably we're going to call it because there's probably going to be lots of things going around, but you know, I would encourage you to get in the habit of when they get home to have to change their clothes because, you know, just a simple thing to throw them in the wash and, and have that done and maybe wash their bedding a little bit more oftentimes too coming up here. So, all right, guys, all of us, we need to be starting right away, boom, with a healthy breakfast every single day. Uh, one of our kids just had a friend over the other day and they slept in, so I think it was, well, they, should, they would have slept longer. I woke them up at like eight o'clock and I said, you guys need to get up. <laughs> and uh, I asked, you know, our son's friend, do you want to have breakfast before I take you home? And he's like, no, I don't eat breakfast. <laughs> You're 13 years old and you don't eat breakfast ever? And he said, no, I never eat breakfast. I don't eat until usually around noon. <laughs> I'm like, oh, this is a big problem, guys. We have got to be, you know, just getting back to some of the basics. This is what starts your day. You're breaking the fast after, you know, you slept for hopefully those eight to 10 hours we mentioned. And now you got to get your body ready for the day. So having some very simple options that are balanced, complete, and fast. We love the Life Shakes. This is a simple one. It's quick. Kids and adults, they can drink it on their way to school. They can put it in the car. You don't have to have an elaborate, you know, sit down and make eggs and oatmeal and a whole, you know, big breakfast every day. You can start out even just trying to 
Sorry, I'm trying, like trying to figure out who is not muted here really fast. Oh, here. Um, okay. oh, there we go. Okay, so simple recipes here. Just a couple to throw at you. You know, we love smoothies. We have a smoothie workshop coming up. I'll share the date with you in a second. But mix it up. You know, we really need to look at how I said we can keep getting different nutrients in our bodies, and smoothies are a great way. And especially when you have picky eaters, because a lot of times picky eaters will drink things overeating. So this is a great strategy to help really sneak in a lot of different vegetables and fruits and, and ideas. Another great breakfast idea is, and actually, these are even good cold to throw into your kids' lunches which sounds funny, but our kids actually love them. Uh, we make these basically protein pancakes. So you use the protein, you got eggs in there, and you, you, know, you mix this all together. Sometimes we'll add some fruit in there. Sometimes I'll throw in those greens boosters, which once the pancakes turn green, we have a little bit harder time with some of our kids eating them. But it's uh, you know, ways that we can mix things up and just try to find some different strategies. But those green boosters are another one. When I got people to say, you know, hey, I don't like any green vegetable. Well, you got to have green vegetables. So how can you do it? Find at least an option that's a powder that you could put in other foods. You know, tonight we had spaghetti and I put in a scoop of that because uh, I, I didn't have time to make any of the vegetables. So that's what we got. So we come up with these ways that we can make things more convenient. So, and also we want to be preparing throughout the day. We started with our breakfast, have snacks prepared in advance. This is where I think people really fall off the wagon too. When you don't have ideas and things ready to go, that's when you start either not eating or grabbing things that are probably of convenience, like from machines and, you know, quick options that are not going to be, if it's from a package, it's probably not going to be very nutritious for you. So look at ways that we can come up with more whole food options and look at how also guys, these are paired. And what I mean by that, it's a protein paired with a carbohydrate and usually they have a little fiber in there. So it's going to help to fill you over longer. So protein, you know, bars and balls are great ideas coming up with, you know, a banana with some type of nut butter, uh, you know, hummus with veggies or guacamole. There's so many ideas, but this is simple, guys. And, you know, you might sometimes get in a rut where you're like, oh, yeah, I have yogurt a lot. Well, add some granola and berries to it. You know, think of just little things that you can do to make it feel different. And instead of eating a simple carbohydrate like some wheat crackers, add some protein with it. So again, you're getting more of that stability throughout your day and to help you with energy, especially later in the day. I think that's what one people, what people really notice. And even kids, you know, they got to focus all day that if they went from, let's say no breakfast, they didn't eat until lunch, and then they're not having a snack, they're paying for it by about two or three o'clock. All of a sudden they're, you know, either off the wall crazy because they can't sit still anymore or, you know, they're crashing and they're not feeling well because they're so tired. So we want to note those combinations are really important. You know, I have to say, guys, you have got to exercise at all ages. I am not going to ever say I don't really think there's any person that should not exercise. I mean, I've taught wheelchair classes. Everybody can exercise. You've got to figure out, you know, what's the best way for you to incorporate this and for kids too, but everybody should be exercising. And I'm putting in this little clause at the bottom because I 100% do not think anybody should exercise a mask on. So if you guys want to argue with me, maybe you can save it for after. But I have seen no positive research stating exercising with masks is good. And once those masks actually start to get even a little bit wet, you have to think of bacteria growing in there. You got to think about, you know, your oxygen being more constricted. So, you know, we got to think about ways we can exercise safely, but definitely know that we need to be moving more and more because it's going to help with everything from your immunity to helping us to uh, all over be healthier. So the other thing we want to mention here, guys, is like I was saying at the very beginning there, your, your chemical exposure, your exposure to toxins. And this is something that I don't think is really talked about very much, but so much of our toxins come from simple products that we use every day. And that very first statement there is one that I highlight because I feel like it is explains well of what we're trying to say here. 81,000 chemicals have been registered with the EPA in the last 30 years, and less than 20% of them have been tested to be if they're found, if they're safe. That is absolutely, to me, just mind-boggling of how we have all of these things. And then think about it when you're combining chemicals. What happens then? You know, we're creating a science experiment basically amongst us and our kids by grabbing these things that we really don't know what's in them. So just start to even think about simple things of finding options that maybe don't necessarily have the strong fragrances that 
uh, look for ingredients on some, good luck. Any of your clean products, guys, go look for your ingredients. It's pretty interesting because you won't be able to find them. They only put usually the active ingredients in there. So you have to really realize there's something going on here with a lot of those chemicals. So, you know, if we're going to be using things like hand sanitizers and masks that we're supposed to be washing every day, what are you putting into those and what is being used in them to make them? So, you know, I'm just really quickly throwing this out there about hand sanitizer because I know this is being pushed everywhere. And we, yes, we, we have to use it. But you also want to know that many of these are not safe. And over time, it can definitely develop a different, basically, you're, you're not able to fight infections as well, these super bugs, they call them, because you have basically created a resistance to bacteria because of all the hand sanitizers. And kids, I can't tell you how many times I see them, you know, they take these huge handfuls of that foaming you know, sanitize and put it all over their hands and it's not even dry and they're eating foods, you know, and that obviously cannot be good for, you know, getting ingested. So we have to be thinking about the endocrine disruptors that are coming from these and all the other harmful effects. So look for safer options. If you guys have been watching the news, there has been all over the place recalls on hand sanitizers and they're finding that they're not safe. Surprise, surprise. So, you know, we just need to know, again, there are safer options and we, you know, definitely highlight that Shackley does have a hand sanitizer now. And yes, I mean, it's still going to be um, a sanitizer, right? We're not saying that this is something that, you know, we want to use all the time. But for example, a kid has to go to eat lunch. They don't have time to wash their hands. They could use this as a safer option. So we just want to mention this. And even at, you know, even at art, for example, at work, I have him take one of these that he has at his desk. You know, it's just something you can have available versus having to um, go find options that maybe aren't necessarily the best choices. And here's another option for cleaning product, the basic G. And I really want to mention this because, you know, if you have kids at school that have a classroom that maybe you have some control over what cleaning products they're using, this basic G does the exact same cleaning as any of your disinfectants out there. It's less expensive and it will not have the strong odors and the same side effects that many of your chemicals do. So note that this is a great alternative. So just want to again, really highlight this. I mean, to make a, you know, a gallon of cleaner for 62 cents that actually works. And again, it's proven against the coronavirus. It's listed now from the EPA as one of the credited disinfectants. Uh, it's a really good thing to know about. So just want to make sure we highlight that. So that is called the Basic G Plus, if you've never heard of it. So just to, again, throw that out there as a disinfectant. All right, guys, let's get into nutrients here really fast. Uh, I think this very first statement is an eye-opening, again, statement because it helps us to know that many of us are deficient in nutrients. And this is where we get into talking about supplementation and finding the right supplements to help build our immunity. Vitamin D is a big one. And if you are taking a multivitamin that has vitamin D in it, that's a great start. We know all of our, our Shackley multivitamins, they were actually the very first company to increase their amount of vitamin D about five years ago because they are finding more and more correlations with many health conditions today and it being related to vitamin D3 deficiency. So, you know, that's a really good thing to know. You need to have enough vitamin D in your, in your supplements because they're saying from foods, oftentimes it's not absorbed as well. So supplementation for vitamin D is a big one. So first thing, we need to start with a multi, guys. I don't care what age you are. Everybody should get a multivitamin to cover your basis and then figuring out a good source of protein to help as a building block. And here's just a quick little illustration of, you know, an option for Incredivites. And if you guys, you know, on the chat there, feel free to even comment if there's something in particular you really like to use. But you can see how it's very difficult to eat all of the foods that you would get in a multivitamin. And as long as it's a clean multivitamin, you don't have to worry that it's doing more harm than good. And that's where the clinical studies come to play. That this is an example of a kid's vitamin, the Vital E, the adult's version. Once a a child usually hits around 12 years old or can swallow vitamins. We say you can switch to the Vital E. Uh, but until then, having a chewable option is great. This is actually on back order for a couple more weeks, but there is another one that's called Ocean Wonders that's very similar to this in case you need an option here immediately, just to mention there. And then when we need a little boost, so we always talk about building our medicine cabinet with things to keep around when we're suddenly not feeling well and we need to quickly get some nutrition in there. There's a lot of options here. I'm just going to choose a few of them. And you guys are going to hang on afterwards for a little bit. I'm going to cover some more uh, 
just a little bit of a highlight because there's going to be some additional things coming here. But for immunity, like vitalized immunity would be similar to emergency. You drop in a glass of water. It's a great thing to use at the first sign of anything when you travel. I always use this when we're on a plane, but it's equivalent of vitamin C of 16 oranges. So it's a really quick, you know, just get your, your immune system a quick jump start. So anytime you start to feel a sore throat, keep this on hand. Now, another thing you can do in combination or separate is called the defend and resist. And these are like little lozenges. You can actually suck on them, you can chew on them, you can turn them into a tea, uh, but it has like your echinacea, extra zinc in there, elderberry, some of the really key, what they're finding, herbal components to help with your immunity, that this really helps to also stimulate the body's resistance to boost you know, more of your, your blood cell, white blood cells. So you're trying to push, you know, basically that virus out. So this is great to use also at the first sign of something. Your probiotics, guys, I can't highlight these enough. We need to be taking probiotics. And I, I will not steer away from this because the more research you see on how much stems from gut health, this isn't something we should just neglect and saying, yeah, I'll get it by eating yogurt. It's not the same. You know, you've got to make sure that that live bacteria is actually getting into your gut. And this little DI probiotic, I started with this one because I love this one because you can actually open it and dump the powder into something. So if a kid can't swallow, you can mix an applesauce, you could throw it in yogurt, you could have a way to get this into them in a very simplified way. Even grown-ups, I have grown-ups that can't swallow very well, so it's great that you can open that up and it will still be guaranteed to be active and live when it reaches your gut health. So the DI has more strains in this then the other probiotic I'm going to show you here in a second. So there's actually four different strains of bacteria in this one that help with promoting that good microflora, helping to build the gut health. And again, as you can see here, they say now anywhere from 70 to 85% of your immune system comes from your gut. So when we talk about building that up, you know, our gut health gets destroyed every day from those environmental toxins, from the foods we put into it, from antibiotics, from medications, from, you know, in environmental components that we have no idea is even going on and that's why having an option for a supplement is uh really important sorry guys i got this in the wrong order so this should be our next one here but even your gut health i always like to highlight this too because we're getting into the time where we're starting to see more you know ear infections more colds more viruses and if you're reading on the screen there you know it's very common for anybody to have six to ten colds a year uh asthma rates continue to increase and so much of this has to do with basically damage that's been done to your digestive health. So there's two options. There's this little DI, or there's also a little tiny probiotic that's a very small pearl. And if you guys see this little pouch here, this is a great little trick for kids that don't like to swallow. They have all those little squeezy pouches now of applesauces and all these different concoctions you can get. Put it in like the very top of that and you could drink it down and you won't even know it's there. So it's a great little hack for trying to get it into kids. Um, but probiotics, guys, I'd be starting this as soon as possible because you don't want to go into being exposed to all of these chemicals and all the exposures of different viruses and then wait. So again, I just really want to keep emphasizing that, that we need to be focusing on, on building up as much as we can. So really fast here, summary for supplements, guys. Get on a good multivitamin. We mentioned the protein. Vitamin C is a great thing to have every day just because it helps with that maintenance of, uh, I skipped that one, I should go back to it. But that one is kind of your, your blast of your antioxidants. So, you know, this time of year, I'm already hearing lots of allergies going around, you know, it's a natural antihistamine. More vitamin C is not going to hurt anyone. And actually, uh, earlier I was just talking with uh, one of my clients and she was saying, you know, I eat a lot of citrus foods. And, you know, even if you take a supplement on top of that, though, you don't have to worry because it's water soluble. You're going to excrete what your body doesn't use. But we're coming into, again, we're going to be getting hit hard. So I would really emphasize, you know, adding more options. There's chewable, there's sustained, and you've got that vitalized immune you can drink. So it's really nice to note, though, for example, the sustained release, it continues to be released throughout five hours into your system. So whenever you're under attack, it's great that you have to know you have to take these every day. This isn't like uh, I just had, again, I thought this was funny the other day. Somebody told me because uh, they had bought a probiotic probably like three months ago. And I was like, you know, how's that probiotic going? And they're like, well, I'm, I'm still using it. And I was like, well, that's great. There's only like... I don't know, 28 or 30 in there. So three months later, and she's like, well, I take it once a week because I'm trying to make it last. <laughs> and it's like, you can't expect that you're going to be building health when you take it 
once a week. So you got to get it in you every single day because it's just going to be absorbed and then it's gone. So you have to keep repeating that. So uh, first sign of attack here, guys, you know, just some good ideas. We mentioned the vitalized immunity. Defend and resist. Garlic is another one, a great one to keep around. Um, great one just for if you're noticing infections. Uh, somebody gets like the drainage, mucus, you want to kill that. And garlic is by far one of your best ways to counteract that. Garlic is actually known as nature's penicillin. So think of what you might use penicillin for, you could use garlic. If you want to eat garlic, you go for it. But I personally don't want to sit and eat cloves and cloves of garlic every day. So a supplement is a great alternative. Uh, and alfalfa would just be one more to mention there. So, And this was just launched today, so I thought I would mention it really fast. There is a special for if you place an order over $200 to the end of the month, you get a uh, same release vitamin C for $5. That was a promotion. And next week, we are going to go live from our smoothie workshop here. So if you want to join us, we're going to begin with immunity first. So I'm going to still talk through, I think, again, immunity needs to be still a big topic. Uh, I'm going to have a few people sharing some, you know, other tips and ideas. And then we're going to get into showing you how we do a smoothie workshop. So you're welcome to join us, watch, maybe get some ideas. And any of you that join in by Zoom, we will share a few of the recipes with you, okay? So just make sure you, whoever invites you, you ask them for some of the recipes. Um, you guys that are coming in person, obviously you'll get them here. So, all right guys, any questions? Uh, you guys are really quiet. I don't see anybody in the chat here going on. So hopefully uh, I just covered so much that you're just so excited and you're all <laughs> feeling uh, ready to go. But anything you guys want to add? Hopefully it was helpful, nobody's sleeping. I gotta go through my screen here. Okay, I only see a couple of you in person. So, <laughs> all right, anybody? helpful so thank you so much it was very helpful very informative grace actually said wow when she said she's going to cover a lot of topics she really did so <laughs> i told you guys we had a lot to cover <laughs> oh, thanks i appreciate the feedback oh, all right guys well if you do think of something like i always say you know reach out to invite you you know ask more if you need some more details we're happy to help and uh yeah every monday night 30 we're here you guys that want to learn a little bit more we're gonna uh, talk here real quick we have some things to share that we know about some exciting announcements coming up here for conference so feel free to hang out we're gonna stand for about 15 more minutes so all right guys thanks for joining have a great night and a healthy uh, back to school here for many of you so thanks guys